Just raced on this bike this past Saturday. Uh, cyclocross race, about 40 minutes or so, five laps, C-class. Probably didn't take a, a huge beating, but um, it was a pretty comfortable, fast paced course. A little bit dusty, more sandy. Uh, I'm just gonna do a quick check here, make sure everything's running okay. It was running pretty good in the race, shifting good, brakes were okay, stuff like that, but I'm gonna check some things out. So I'm giving this tire a spin by hand. and it's spinning okay, coming to its stop okay. Brake might be dragging just slightly, but nothing to be worried about. Uh, I don't think it's gonna slow me down in a race. No squeaking, anything like that. Give your brake lever a feel, give it a squeeze. That's gonna tell you a lot when you go to squeeze it. Brake lever should be moving maybe half distance before it makes contact with the brake pad. Then you can squeeze harder if needed. Um, that's telling me that the brake lever, the cable feels good, or if you're running hydraulic, the hydraulic fluid, there's enough in there. There's no air in the system, so that's that's good. Now, if you're having a different issue of like braking power, you're not coming to a stop quickly enough, you can't lock your brake up and skid the rear wheel, then that's more of a friction issue that's gonna be between your rotor and your brake pads. Then you either wanna clean your rotor, scuff up your brake pads, or use some isopropyl alcohol. Uh, if you felt like some oil or overspray, um, don't use aerosol sprays to do your chain. It's gonna get everywhere, get on your rotor, get on your uh, brake pads, and then you contaminate your pads. Your pads are like sponges. It's gonna soak it up, and it's not gonna get rid of any oil, and you have to toss those pads out, get some new pads. Tell my little uh, pedal cranker helper, I cut the cut a plastic pedal and made this guy, partially because I'm cheap, but two, it's kind of fun making your own stuff sometimes. So I'm gonna go ahead and tighten this in. I'm just gonna snug it up, depending how long I'm working with this, so I don't want it to start backing out on me. Just a gentle snug. Like that. Now I can go ahead and turn this crank. And not worry about my fingers getting stuck in the chain or chain ring. So I'm gonna go through the shifting here. I went ahead and washed it, so chain's definitely, it got scrubbed, but it's always dry. So after washing, I'm gonna go ahead and lubricate. One, two, three, four, five. It's about five revolutions. Careful how you stop your wheel, use your brake and brake kind of stopped itself right there. Go back with your rag, wipe off your excess. That way we're not attracting more dust and dirt on the next ride. I like to clean the tops and bottom of the chain and then the sides. And while you're here, you can inspect your pulley wheels. If they look real gooky, go ahead and get that off there. Watch your fingers, uh, wipe down your derailleur. You can always hit pivot points on your derailleur after a wash. So you can always uh, lubricate your derailleur. I got a front derailleur. And then we'll continue with some checks. We're gonna check uh, bearings in the rear wheel. So we're just moving, trying to see if the wheel moves side to side sideways. That feels good. We're gonna do the same thing with the crank arm, side to side, very gently. No movement there. Same thing with your front wheel. All that feels good. And then we can feel our headset. So with the headset, if you're in a repair stand, you can go ahead and give it a good spin and then go ahead and hit the brake really quickly and hard. If you hear any excess moving or jarring around, um, it could be a loose headset, could be a loose wheel, could be a loose brake caliper. Check all those things. And also just checking your brakes. Brakes overall are feeling good. Lever stops in a good spot. I had no issues with the with the brakes on, on there, out there in the course. So you can also check air pressure if you're running tubeless. The sealant and run stands, so over time the sealant can evaporate leaving you with the little granules that kind of build up at the bottom, leaving you with a little, a little sea urchin, looks like this. It's up to you to check and gauge. We can always take the valve core out, put it down at the six o'clock, use a pin, drop it in, pull it out, see if there's any wetness. That's one way, it's, it's kind of a so-so way to tell. Um, or you just uh, open up a side of your tire, your sidewall, look inside, you can visually see the puddle. But then you start to get, in, get to know, okay, every two months or three months I need to refill my sealant. Go ahead and put that on the calendar, refill appropriately. You end up running out of sealant, it will, this guy will slowly start to develop leaks um, to the point where if you ignore it, it may just go flat completely when on your next ride, so pay attention to that. So we got our lab chain lubricated, you can lubricate your derailleurs. I have hit all the pivot points, wipe everything down. Um, periodically, you're checking your brake pads, making sure your pads aren't getting too thin, checking the wear of your tires, not getting too bald or have any deep cuts that are potentially gonna tear or the tube's gonna come out and pop. Um, headset moves pretty good, we're not loose. Uh, no binding here, spins good here. Wheels are rotating good, uh, except for a minor drag with the brake pad. 
Um, this guy's spinning pretty good. So, and then you just go through the whole bike again with your, your tool. Any, any bolt you can tighten, just get in there and just do some gent gentle tightening. When in doubt, check with a torque uh, recommendation. Use a torque wrench if you're uncomfortable with doing it by feel. But you're just going through everything, caliper bolts, saddle, once I get the saddle back on, cable pinch bolts, chain rings, uh, crank arm, water bottle cage bolts, uh, saddle, uh, seat post clamp, your stem for the, your pinch bolt for the steer tube, and then your face plate for the handlebars, and then your shifters over here. You got two bolts inside here. We'll make sure these guys, the shifters are not moving inside or out. Make sure those are tight. Front wheel, front wheel caliper, disc brake bolts. That's something I always kind of forget or take for granted. Kind of just do do that whole check, then you should be good to go. Oh yeah, I oh, forgot to do a quick check on wheel trimming. If your wheel's a little crooked, uh, you could always, if you have side pull brakes, you can just give it a spin, look between your brake pad and the sidewall of your rim. You can see if that rim is going left or right. It needs to stay in the center. If it's going off to the left or right, we know we need to true it. Uh, this is a disc brake system. So if you're very careful, you can use your fingertip to gauge, we're not touching anything, but to be on the safe side, maybe use a piece of plastic, like the uh, end of a pen or an eraser off a pencil. So when you give it a spin, you can kind of use this as a marker coming into the side here. And then you can see, get a better visual on that sidewall of the rim, whether it's moving left or right. That looks pretty good. Stay away from your spokes. That looks great too. Sometimes you could hear the sealant rolling around inside there, or it could just be dry and the little granules are rolling around. So either way, you should probably check. <laughs>